Okay, this morning we're gonna do a little inspection of the interior of the hull. Uh, I want to look at the inside of these areas that uh, uh, showed some cracks. Uh, I've done some additional sanding, um, but it occurs to me that I also should uh, take a look at the inside to see what kind of damage has gone on there. I think this crack that you're looking at here is uh, uh, inconsequential. It's in the uh, resin that I used way back when when I did the original repair. Not a wonderful job, but it's held up. I think I can do better work these days. So uh, what we're going to do is try three different cameras. Uh, the small handheld that I'm using now, the phone, and then a little uh, JVC addiction camera. The big issue is, is uh, since this is going to be basically a macro uh, image that we need, um, which camera can do the job and or or what you might have available to do the same kind of thing. What I've done is actually stick uh, two types of lights in there. I have a light bulb and then a, a fluorescent drop light that I have. So uh, we'll take a little right here in a second and see what we can see. So we're starting with a small uh, Sony camera here. So we'll see how we can do in this situation. And there's the inspection hatch. My initial effort, I was just holding the Sony uh, camera in my hand and then I reached in through the inspection hatch and uh, quickly realized that it was impossible to get the camera in uh, quite as far as I needed to. I could see the very rear side of the, uh, the beam uh, area, but not the front side of it. And then that was also where I suspected there might be cracks. Moving the camera slowly would be uh, really helpful, but uh, since you can't see what's going on, it's really, really difficult to, to uh, get the slow motion that you want. So I remembered that I had a small uh, gorilla uh, tripod uh, in my shop, so I added it to the camera and that gave me at least another 12 inches of reach. Uh, and allowing me to get the camera in far enough to see the uh, forward side uh, of the beam area, the rear beam area. The advantage of using uh, video versus some still shots uh, is that uh, a still shot would be great if you knew exactly where to point the camera. Uh, but the fact of the matter is these cracks could literally be anywhere. So even with all this jerky uh, motion, you stand a pretty good chance in slow motion reviewing the video to find uh, problems. Here you can see what I was uh, calling the inconsequential crack before and uh, clearly it needs some attention. What I thought was interesting in looking at this video was that the center of these tube sections or the beams, there's quite a large uh, heavy uh, reinforcement, um, but not on the outboard edges. And uh, it seems like when they were building it, that was a, that would have been the exact area that I would have wanted more strength. I apologize for all this uh, bouncing around, but uh, clearly the subject matter is really close to the lens and uh, the camera wasn't moving very fast, but uh, clearly the a little bit of movement at this range makes for uh, some pretty jerky uh, video. The only reason I'm showing this at all is so that someone else can get an idea of what a NACRA 5.2 looks like, particularly an older one. Uh, so that they ever endeavor to, to, to do repairs. Uh, but again, the other thing that is interesting is just trying to use various kinds of cameras so that you can see inside without having to remove the deck plates. An inspection like this with a camera would uh, give you a really good idea if 
if removing uh, the deck plates was the best way to get at some of this area to do a repair. Um, so yeah, I would go to, if I thought I had serious damage, uh, I would go to great lengths uh, with a camera first uh, to get in there and take a look before I took the effort to remove those deck plates. Uh, I did a little bit of repair through the inspection hatch on that one crack already, um, but it's really difficult to do much in the way of repair it, through the inspection hatch. This is a crack on the uh, starboard hull at the main beam that's not visible from the uh, outside of the boat, but is clearly visible here, and uh, I do have access to it. So I'll do some work on the inside for reinforcement and then uh, probably also do some work on the outside. The small uh, JVC or GoPro type cameras are also useful for this kind of work. Uh, they're smaller and uh, easy and also with the wide field of view, they're not so obnoxious with the bouncing around with the, uh, as you saw with the Sony, which has a smaller field of view, but has also got sharper uh, uh, detail showing. But for a gross inspection like this, the uh, a, a, this JVC or a GoPro, totally adequate to, to get you what you might need. And you could easily tape one to a rod or something to, to reach inside further and uh, check around the inside of the daggerboard trunk or whatever, and it'd be easy to do. The, the downside to the small cameras is uh, if they have a, a, a finder at all, uh, they're really hard to review in the field without uh, downloading to a computer for a greater detail. Cell phone video is also adequate for uh, doing some of this work. Uh, what I found uh, uh, sort of challenging uh, was you might as well just turn the video on uh, before you stick the camera in inside the hull because uh, trying to operate it uh, once your hand's inside uh, proved to be pretty challenging. The comment about operating the uh, cell phone applies more to trying to take a still shot. Uh, trying to get an individual image was uh, fairly difficult, particularly when you wanted that flash to work. But the cell phone did have the advantage of uh, being easy to review right there on, on the spot. Uh, the detail on the, the, the phone was adequate to know if you had a, uh, an issue worth uh, uh, dealing with. And so uh, certainly for a field situation, I would uh, think that'd be perfect. 